Okay, uh, so we saw that the, when we calculate the arc length using the arc length formula, the result is going to be independent of the parameterization, right? That's one important note to keep about arc length. Now what we're going to look at is, we can define what is called arc length function. The idea of arc length function is that S of t is the integral from 0 to t of r prime u du. Let me take a few moments to explain this. See, you have a parameterization r of d with something here, something, something. Okay, and t is between, let's say, 0 to, I don't know, something. Uh, let's say for t bigger than equal to 0, from 0 onwards, the curve is being drawn out. The idea of the arc length function is a function of t, is that it gives you the length that has been rolled out or traced out so far. So you plug in various values of t in the domain. Of course, if you plug s of 0, you'll get the integral from 0 to 0, so you'll get nothing. So let's say this, the curve is like this, it's being traced out in, let's say it's in 3D, I'm, even though I'm drawing a 2D. Uh, so let's say until here the length, uh, let's say this is t equal to 2, and this length, let's say, is 7. So then s of 2 would equal 7, right? Similarly, if let's say this is t equal to 8, and this was t equal 0 to start, and let's say the length from uh, here to here is I don't know, 20, then s of 8 would be 20, okay? The idea is that, so how do we calculate that? How do we define it as a function? So this is not a specific measurement, it's a function of t. It's a function of t, what does it do is it integrates the arc length, uh, derivative, uh, the arc length formula, uh, same formula, but from 0 to t, where t is a generic value, to be specified later, right? So in general, the answer of the evaluating this is going to be an expression involving t's. So then by plugging various values of t's, you can get the different lengths uh, for different t time values. Why I have used a different variable here, u, is uh, the standard practice, you have seen this in, um, you have seen this uh, in one variable calculus, when we sometimes do substitutions, other things. You don't want to use the same variable as you're using in the outer limits of the integral. So not to confuse things. So when, when I put u here, it doesn't really change anything from the fact that this is r of t. You will just put u's there, but then you're doing with respect to the integral, with respect to the same u, so you put du. Just so that you can do this integral without getting confusing with this t. But then once you get this expression with u's, you integrate it, find it derivative, plug in 0 to t, and you'll get an expression involving t's. Okay? Um, this is going to connect to uh, another uh, uh, important concept, which is reparameterizing, or let's say parameterizing, parameterizing a curve with respect to our length. Okay. In other words, we want um, we want R in terms of the the arc length fu function. What will be the benefit of doing that? The benefit will be this. Suppose you have a let's say a curve like this. Suppose you have a curve like this. It goes from t equal zero to t equal let's say five. And the total length, uh, the, let me not draw that, make it confusing. The length is, let's say, 8. Okay? The length of this curve is 8. Uh, when you plug in t equals 0 to t equals 5, it draws out this curve. I want to parameterize it with, with a different variable in such a way that I achieve this thing. And what is it that I'm trying to achieve? This is what I want to achieve. I want t equals 0. The length is 8, right? I want to think of it that each time step, each, each one unit of time, I cover one unit of length. So because I have eight units of length to cover, right, the length is not going to change no matter how I reparameterize this curve. I have eight lengths to cover, I want to finish this journey after eight time steps. T is going to be eight here. Not just the total T will be eight, but everywhere along the way. If I stop at T equal to 1.5, then this length would be 1.5. 
If I stop at t equal to 7 uh, or 5, then I have, so basically kind of like, imagine you're walking on a path, you're walking 10 meters and you're very getting a stopwatch where it takes you like 13 seconds walk, walking. So you want to recalibrate the stopwatch in such a way that when you look at the stopwatch, how many seconds you've passed is telling you how many meters you've walked. That's the idea of reparameterizing curve with respect to the arc length. So now we're going to do this exercise. We're going to take that helix example and reparameterize it with respect to its own arc length. So let's erase this part of the board. Actually, I made a small mistake here. I wrote S of t. What I need to write is I want to express t in terms of s, right? Well, s, s is a function of t is the arc length function. But then what I want to do is I want to extract t out of it in such a way that it tells me what the s is because the s is the arc length function, right? You, it will become clear when we do this example. So let's do this thing. Um, uh, example. Reparameterize the helix R of t cos the same helix that we've used in the last example. So let's say this helix is being traced out. Okay, uh, it's starting at zero, and this helix. Now, if I don't specify upper limit, it just keeps going up. Yes. Uh, I could do it for a finite piece of curve, or I could do it for an infinite piece of curve. I'm just going to do it for the whole thing. Uh, just starting at zero, it just keeps making curves up and up and up. Reparameterize the helix with respect to arc length. So the first thing we're going to do, remember here, we have to do R of T of S. We have to express T in terms of S. So first we have to express S in terms of T, so that we can express T in terms of S. We flip the relationship, right? So, <clears throat> what was S of t? S of t is the integral from 0 to t of the r prime of u uh, length du, right? Now, we did this earlier for in the last example. Remember, we calculated the length of this derivative was square root of 2. So, this thing is from 0 to t is square root of 2 du, okay? So this gives you the square root of 2t, right? So then, uh, I'll raise a little bit up there to continue. Then what we have now? We have s as a function of t is the square root of 2t. What I need to do is I need to express t in terms of s. So think of it, basically s is this, so what is t in terms of s? T is the square root of 2 over s, right? So that's the relationship I'm looking for. I can write it as t as a function of s is this one, right? I solve for t in terms of s. And so then my parameterization would be, uh, I'll put the t of s in my parameterization. So I will get r of, it will be in terms of s, uh, will be, I'll plug cos, cosine of t. T is this thing, so it will be cosine of square root of 2 s, sine of square root of 2 s, and t is just square root of 2 s. Okay? Now, this is yet another parameterization of the same helix, but the, what, what is nice about this particular parameterization is what I mentioned earlier, is now that if I put plug in any value, If I plug, let's say, if I do r of 3, okay, the curve that should have been traced from r of 3, 3 is a little bit less than 2 pi, because 2 pi is 6.28 roughly. So r of 3 would trace, not fully the circle, it will not finish the thing. The nice thing is that the length of this thing, the length of this thing would be exactly 3. Because we had time 3, we stopped it, the length would be exactly the same as the time. So that's the benefit of reparameterizing or parameterizing a curve with respect to its arc length, it gives you this nice relationship that the number of the length you walked is exactly the number of time second time steps uh, that you've taken in the in the parameterization world. This finishes for us for now the discussion of arc length. The next topic we're going to talk about now is the curvature of the curves.